The Israel Defense Forces are said to be nearing Shifa Hospital, believed to be the command center for Hamas and possibly the location of hostages. Joining us now is Jerusalem Bureau Chief Jewish News Syndicate, Alex Trayman. And Alex, uh, just tell me a, a little bit about uh, what you make, especially about hearing journalists embedded with Hamas, used by CNN, other outlets. Just give me um, the, the initial thoughts on that. Well, this has been going on for a long time. Several years ago, the IDF bombed a building that was the AP headquarters. It was also the Hamas headquarters. I mean, these these outlets worked together on October 17th. Uh, Hamas claimed that the IDF hit a hospital and killed 500 people. It turned out to be that it was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket. It didn't hit the hospital. It hit the parking lot outside the hospital. And there was no way that could have been a mass casualty event. Probably less than 20 people in total were killed. Uh, you know, so the mainstream media has been working together with Hamas for, for many, many years, sowing the narratives that Hamas wants it to sow. To ask you about this, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today criticized mainstream Western media for working with those stringers, as they're called, or photojournalists mm -hmm. embedded with Hamas, but calling them specifically accomplic accomplices in crimes against humanity. Now, we do want to point out that CNN has already formally severed ties with a freelancer who was photographed getting a kiss from the terror group's leader. Um, also, the New York Times coming out and saying we had absolutely no idea this was happening in advance. These are freelance photojournalists. We do not give them direction. They work with different outlets already in those regions. Uh, just your reaction to that. Well, the photo says a thousand words. I, I think it speaks for itself. And it's probable that the news agencies did not know about the attack before it happened. It would have been an obligation of them to report it if they did. Uh, but certainly we saw thousands of civilians uh, together with the militants on October 7th uh, near and coming across the border. And so it, it's it's very plausible that uh, some of them would have been stringers or photographers that send photos into Reuters and the AP and others. So, uh, you know, they crossed the border. They participated in an attack. And then not only that, they took pictures and got paid for it. Alex, so if they didn't know, which we'll give them the benefit of the doubt here, talk about gross negligence then. Did nobody at these these news organizations, and as, as you discussed, this is a bigger problem, that they are so far flung to one side that maybe sometimes they're not even using their brains here to vet this kind of stuff? You know, they've been uh, classically... Uh demonstrating anti-Israel bias for many years already, and uh, Israel doesn't get a fair shake in the media. Uh, so I think it's beyond uh, negligence. There's there's a campaign here to delegitimize Israel in the mainstream media. Every single one of the major uh, majors out there, the AP, Reuters, New York Times, BBC, CNN, they've all participated. Uh, you know, look at Reuters today. They still have six headlines uh, up that you can search on online and see their headlines about the IDF a strike on the hospital that was proved to be not true. They're still reporting that that the IDF did it. So, you know, it's uh, it, it, this is just the latest in a, in a string of incidents that proves where the mainstream media is with regard to Israel. Yeah, hard to know exactly what they knew at the time, sure. but no doubt shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened on that level. Alex Trayman, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.